Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 17 of Visions of Tomorrow, the review series for Gran Turismo's pretty decent, but kind of slower at the moment, series for Vision GT concept cars. Cars which don't have to adhere to racing or necessarily road-going rules. Vehicles which are just pie-in-the-sky dream imaginations of engineers and designers. And one of the great things about those is that you can potentially have some amazing cars when you allow those creative people, engineers, designers, etc., to have basically a free reign to do whatever they want. And you can see that quite clearly from cars such as the Tomahawk, the Chaparral, and a couple of others. Others, though, don't necessarily deliver on that quite as much. They tend to be more marketing ploys. This car, I was very happy with when it was first released. And I continue to be happy with this car for two distinct reasons. The main reason why I was overjoyed when this car was released was not because I'm a Subaru fan in particular. I'm actually not that big a fan of Subaru. I love the Forester STI, but apart from that, I'm not a huge fan of them. I have a lot of respect for them and I love the Boxer engine. I'm just not a huge Subaru fan. The reason why this car was very exciting to me when it came out is because it was one of the relatively few VGTs, especially at the time when it was released when there were far fewer of them, that could be tuned. Specifically, the gearbox. Because if our hands are tied as tuners and also drivers to some degree, as far as how competitive we can make these vehicles, well then the manufacturers are really shooting themselves in the foot, because you just don't get to use the car as much as it deserves to. You can take a vehicle with amazing potential, such as, for instance, the Nissan Concept 2020 VGT, which has huge performance capabilities based on how good the GTR already is, but then it just doesn't live up to it, because the top speed is only just over 220, and you can't make it any better than that, which automatically means that it's just not fast enough for its power or its PP on tracks which require that. This car, though, allowed us to tune the gears and it makes such a huge difference to the potential of a car far more than people who don't tune regularly actually realize this car is actually one of the quickest vgts so far it's very easy to just think about cars like the chaparral and the tomahawk but this subaru is a seriously rapid vehicle the top speed is over 260 miles per hour that is seriously rapid for a Subaru, and it actually makes it the fastest Subaru in the game, by far. Over 30 miles per hour, in fact. That's a pretty strong selling point straight away. But not only is it the fastest Subaru in the game, it's just a brilliant VGT in general. Now, the handling can divide opinion, but we'll get to that in a moment. As far as the design of the car, one of the things that I actually love about this Subaru is that it actually uses the VGT project in the way that we want all of the companies to. It uses imagination. It doesn't adhere to some kind of production scale or inform people what the next Subaru legacy that they want to buy is going to look like. Of course not. It's a completely insane looking car which has a much longer bonnet than Subarus traditionally do, and kind of looks like a melding of lots of different categories of vehicle almost put together. It has the chunkiness of a wagon or an SUV, but with the proportions and stance of more of a race car or a supercar. It's a very interesting vehicle. Plus, it's a kind of hybrid with boxer power along with electric motors, giving it a combined output of a really decent 651 horsepower. Torque isn't particularly high at 380 pound-feet, but the fact that it's also pretty lightweight for a hybrid at 1380 kilos means that the performance is very good. Now, I mentioned earlier the handling, and the reason why it's potentially divisive is because although it's technically an all-wheel drive car, the way that it handles is actually more like a front-wheel drive car. The car and the steering of the car very much leads with the front end. The vast majority of power and grip feels as though it's going to those front wheels. And although that's good because it means that the car is very difficult to make spin out, it also means that it's potentially a little bit heavier than you might like, given that it has to be propelling 
650 horsepower, potentially around some pretty tight corners. Is it a bad handling car? Certainly not. It makes an excellent rally car, an excellent road racer, and the top speed means that it can beat most other Japanese performance cars in the game, and many other cars with that kind of power. There are actually very few cars with around 650 horsepower that are as fast as this. So, as far as performance, it is a very strong car. Now, as far as PP, it sits at 611, which is actually pretty good. You don't want it to be too high on these VGTs because of competitiveness. But, as we mentioned earlier, being able to tune the car to the degree that we can with this one means that it is much, much more useful. And I would actually put this Subaru up there with cars like the Volkswagen VGT in terms of just how good and useful it can potentially be. Now the Volkswagen is definitely a better handling vehicle and is faster around corners. But my example of the Volkswagen is to illustrate just how useful this Subaru can be in the right hands. It's a VGT which I'm so grateful for the fact we can actually use. It's a legitimately useful competition machine. It's not just a rolling piece of art or something which looks good on paper and perhaps advertises their next range of vehicles but doesn't really do anything in the game. I love that Subaru took the opportunity to really make a great effort at a VGT car. It does everything we need. It doesn't have an interior, which is unfortunate, but everything else is covered extremely well. The handling is good and unique, the looks are unique, the top speed is incredibly strong, and it's just a great all-round car. It, it costs 1 million credits, but it's one of the few VGTs which I would say is definitely worth that. But that's it for this episode, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.